Welcome to Expedient Means with Lin Wei on Time Monk Radio. Lin currently resides in China and is the founder and head teacher of Guizhen Philo Cultural Society. His extensive experience in Buddhist and Taoist meditation, Qigong, martial arts, and traditional Chinese medicine. To learn more about Lin, please visit his website at www.guizhenhui.net. Tonight, Lim will be continuing his commentary on the 50 de- Scandin- sorry, the 50 Scanda Demon States. Uh, Welcome back, Lynn. <laughs> hello, hello. So yes. we're at the four, we're at the forty ninth state tonight, right? <laughs> well, we're just going down the line. Um, this is a state of the form skanda uh, when one is cultivating, and it's more of discussion, not much commentary. Commentary is uh, Master Hua's commentary is pretty damn awesome, so I really don't want to do any commentary. Just more of a highlighting. It's- yeah, discussion on the commentary, I guess. Right, right. So it brings a better, uh, a different type of uh, feel to a sutra. And and the reason why is um, once when, when you have cultivators who don't even claim of uh, Buddhist or Taoist or Hindu or any other type of school, but they hear the word sutra or doctrine or, or whatever in that sense, they already have this, I got to put it off. I can't, I can't look at it. That's disgusting. It's a dogma. But what they fail to realize is that whole concept of a dogma is what people have put on upon something. It's not actually what the thing is. Anywho, I am in my office again, so we will have some commotion in the around our recording for probably about a uh, ten minutes. <laughs> Heads up. All right. So let's uh, let's dive into it. Let's go. Uh, so this is about the sort of like the light body. I, yeah. I guess. Yeah, it's it's kind of like um, there's this just this bright emergence of light. Basically, what it says is a pure brightness merging into the environment. Okay, it's like when some are meditating and all of a sudden they hit this white light and they're like, "Oh, follow the light! I have to go towards the light." And my student and I were talking about this just yesterday too, and I said, "This is where we're going into in our discussions tomorrow night on the uh, on our uh, on our show." So, anywho, um, it is about this pureness. And this breaking into, we'll just call it a breaking into uh, a higher state of realization. But it's not that you're realizing something. You're going through an experience of something. And it's kind of like all things are one. Thinking uh, the universal creamy creamy oneness (laughs) that everyone has to go (laughs) and and get a taste of, you know? (laughs) Right. Um, So in in the uh, commentary there, it it talks about the four elements uh, no longer functioning together and the body transcends obstructions. Mm. Um, What what exactly does he mean by that? Uh, The four elements, they don't rely on each other. They won't integrate. It doesn't mean the body is separate and you have the element of water on one side and the element of fire on the other side. You know, it won't be like that where you're sitting there going, wow, my body, uh, these, uh, in my body has disappeared. And then I have these four balls and there are four elements swirling around. They're not doing anything with each other anymore. <laughs> no, it's not like that. <laughs> it's just that they won't have their dualistic function of uh, what they call in the five elements or the four elements of uh, the creation and the destruction cycles. Okay, they won't be be countering each other it would kind of as though everything is in peace or stillness or state a state of homeostasis nothing is relying on each other in this aspect nothing is relying on each other nothing is dependent upon excuse me dependent upon each other it's as though Mm. there is no more of a need for these things to interact with each other in the westland is that the same thing that they call the uh the astral or the etheric body and if not what's the difference well basically astral etheric body um and this primordial self or primordial baby or mysterious female all these are just they're just names of the same thing people in different cultures around the world giving it whatever the hell they want to give it 
So when you'll have people who will be investigating, oh, the mysterious female is this, and another person will say, oh, the etheric body is that. They're talking about the same thing, but they're going to argue about um, the way it's been used or the context or just because someone they like said this one thing. Yeah, so they're going to fight against it. Basically, it's in the same thing. But when it's talking about this here, about this pure brightness merging into the environment has nothing to do with your body or your energetic soul, spirit, whatever people like to call it, jumping out. And all of a sudden, all, all directions have, been dis- have disappeared. It's this um, a state where there's this pure, well, obviously exactly what it says, pure brightness, and all things – are non-discriminate at that point. You are not... Um, what's the word here? You're not having is to there's... think about what this is going to be or what that is going to be. Things are, are, there... are not obstructed in that aspect. Is there like a sense of ego? Or is the ego kind of melted away? You've gotten to the state because... One has gotten to the state because they have found stillness. So there was no separation in their mind. There is no ego investi- uh, pulling strings here. Things, it's a state where basically it's like a state that you're getting into and all of a sudden you hit this window or so and it shatters and all of a sudden this bright light has emerged, is all around you. But there is no you. You're just in that space. There's just that. Nothing else is happening. It's just this total immersion of what I would like to call um, the pure universal light. Hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah, I guess that sounds a little different than than what I know about the astral uh, mm. astral world. All right. Uh, so I guess how how does that connect in with the uh, Skanda demon states? Well, because the person is cultivating and they hit the state, and they feel like wholeness. They feel this whole entire. Um, Oh, man, the right word I'm looking for, probably I'm not going to say it, but it goes close to this. It's kind of like everything is pushed together, compressed together, but they feel so expansive. It's like nothing is separate from them. Okay? But because it's still a state, okay, and within this state, um, they can put out an intent and go anywhere. They can literally travel or go to different places. So here you got into the astral projection, but it's not that it's not the same concept of people saying astral body and um, uh, you have to they, they have certain types of methods for it. This happens automatically like you're getting into state and all of a sudden this state hits and now you're like, oh, wait, I want to go to like uh, Mars or I want to go to another dimension five million light years away. I want to go into that space there. And boom, you just shot into any direction of that place. It's, it, it, they call it as uh, – well, the commentary calls it the body produced by intent. This is now your mind. This is still giving you a form though, okay? So what happens is when we have this state, we can attach to this as being uh, – an, an, an ultimate state. We'd be like, wow, I have a great power. I want to go. I can go any place I want. I can do anything I need. You know, go into this area, go into that planet. I can go to California. I can go to Canada. I can go to Alaska. <laughs> you know, um, but the person can get uh, very attached to this st- feeling and the views that he'll create about this state and think they're great. It's- yeah, I've, I've read uh, quite a few times that one of the traps or, or dangers in cultivation is, uh, again, that people um, cultivate and achieve these CDs. And then they attach to the CDs, and uh, they basically just get so attached to them, they can stop their practice. And then, in some cases, they just lose the ability to achieve these CDs anymore. CDs, yeah, them. yeah. You see, it's it's a common it's a common fall that most cultivators go through. When they're getting a little taste of uh, some sweetness in their practice, um, they all of a sudden put themselves on a pedestal. Even if they don't tell other people, they do so in their own mind. They'll put out a sense of humility to everybody else, and then they themselves build up in their own mind who they are, or what they think they are, or what they think they're going to become. And That itself is a downfall. Now, in this state, it further talks that in this state, because you have this ability to utilize your intent, it says that um, 
the, the sutra states that a person can use his mind to investigate that wondrous light. The light will pervade his body and be able to in, extract intestinal worms from his own body. Okay, and people be like, what? That's crazy. <laughs> I'm not going to get any bugs out of my body. <laughs> but some people can get states where um, you can reach states in cultivation where you can actually pull out things that cause sickness in your body. Hmm. So when they say um, intest intestinal worms, it's maybe not so much a physical thing. It could even be on an energetic type level. Well, think about it, that people eat all types of animals, right? Um, it's not that that animal's physical body still remains in the body even after, you know, they have metabolized everything. <laughs> um, the influence of that animal's energy is within the body. So... This goes into quantum physics when it, or, or whatever we call it. I'm not a scientist and I don't really study much, but I've heard and, and seen and, and read some things about quantum physics. Yet, I'm not an expert, so please don't quote me on this. Um, well, when we're talking about deeper energetic states, meaning going into energetics of things and vibrational levels and whatnot, energy, energy and vibration, okay? Let's just go to vibration. It creates things. If you can match the vibrational level of that, or if you can get an idea or get an, a feeling and utilize that feeling and strengthen that feeling and raise that vibration and project it somehow, some way, you will influence the experiences you have in your life. And it may turn to where we think of things that we want to have. And all of a sudden, we come up with a method to create it, to make it, and we end up actually physically making it. But it was vibrational first. It was thought first. So energy or thought and vibration, vibration, these things, these, um, they influence the physical world. So the physical and the energetic are not separate, as many people like to go, the mind, body, and spirit. You have to work on one before you work on the other. No, everything is all influential. I mean, everything influences each other. They are connected. So, so I guess it's sort yeah. of false thinking on my yeah. part with that. And no, it's okay. That's a good question. Um, so it is all energetic. That's basically I could have just said that all in one shot. Yes, it is just all energetic, um, but it has a physical uh, influence on the body. Okay, but the person is in every aspect of this co of this discussion we're going to look at, in every part of the commentary and sutra um, that is spoken here. Uh, there's always a sentence. It's redundant, and it says, um, this is a temporary state in the course of practice. Um, it does not indicate sagehood. If he does not think he has become a sage, he this will be a good state. If he considers himself a sage, then he will be vulnerable to demonic influences. You're going to hear this in every single explanation of every single state. Okay. Yeah, it is <laughs> getting getting repetitive in the mm -hmm. uh, commentary. Yeah, so, so I, yeah, I, I was just going to say jokingly, I guess... Uh, once you finally do reach a state, uh, reach a state of sagehood, you must uh, <laughs> you must have a lot of doubts because <laughs> many you think you're sage, it seems like you're not one. <laughs> Doubt is is what fuels our cultivation. Like, is this really going to happen? Is this really happening? Let me keep going. The the desire to keep going and, and attain uh, is the good type of uh, false thinking. Uh, yet we don't want to grasp at what we assume we attained just because we've experienced it. I mean, these things will pass by. They'll pass us these states. So basically everything we're going to say is going to be, if you think you got it and you believe you got it, you're going to lose it. And you're going to go down a long, long, long road of suffering your own false thinking. But if you sit there and go, oh, that's pretty cool. All right, let me keep going. Don't even bother with it. You didn't get anything. You put this on your on your shoulder, on your lapel, and say, hey, look what I got. I got a nice badge. I can do astral projection and pull worms out of my body. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good for you. You go, that's the wrong path to go. So all of this, this 50 Skanda Demon States is more like a, hey, don't do that kind of a dis discussion. Because it's very common. I mean, very, very common. So common, the Buddha's like, I got to let you know this. Because you don't even realize you do this. Yeah, and then further along in the uh, commentary, uh, Master Hua uh, says essentially that, um, you know, if you weren't cultivating, you would never be able to even hit this uh, this demonic state. So I yeah. guess in that sense, it's kind of maybe in, in one sense, as long as you're not too attached to it or as long as I'm trying to think of how to phrase this, but say you did get attached to this state temporarily. Um <laughs> 
you know, c- could you use it as some type of marker, I guess, or well, like it, as long as okay, get a, should you not even do that? Okay, okay. Let's say a person just did it for a marker and says, "Hey, hey, I got this date. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, I must be doing something good because." I was able to pull out worms in my meditation. I didn't even realize that was happening, and it happened. That's so cool, right? And they go, mm-hmm. okay, um, okay, let me just keep going. That's not bad. But when they go, ooh, I did that, let me do it again, and they try to push for that state, then they get right. it again, and then they try to get that state again, they're like, oh, I'm so cool, I can do that. Oh, man, this is so cool, I got a cool power. I wonder if I can pull out of other people's bodies. <laughs> you know and then they start yeah. i can pull worms from your body you know start <laughs> making people believe that they can do this now they go in somewhere else but if they wake up from it and realize that they've been taken by this demonic state that's good too that they go oh damn it i fell off the horse <laughs> you know i gotta find my horse now it ran away <laughs> i gotta go back and diligently cultivate and screw the state i don't even care about trying to get that feeling again let me just go forward some people can stay in state for three, four months, not even realize it, a, a year, 10 years, 20 years, not even realize it. And then these states can become not just one specific state. They can be a multitude of states, complexity, complex states all mixed together. Mm. Yeah, I know. Uh, crazy. I, I know you and I have both probably seen uh, countless examples of this in you know, some of the cultivation forums and whatnot <laughs> so don't note any specific people but yeah yes 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 um <laughs> yeah there's a lot of states the 50s kind of demon states things uh, uh discussion goes really deep into well generally 50 types of states but of course these things can be all mixed together they can combine so um we should go on we have a lot to right. cover today. Um, the next aspect in this, the next part, he goes uh, further as a person uses his mind to intently investigate inside and outside his physical and spiritual souls, intellect, will, essence, and spirit will be able to interact with another without affecting his body. They will take turns as a host and guest. Uh, then he may suddenly hear the Dharma being spoken in space, or perhaps he will hear esoteric truths being pronounced simultaneously throughout the ten directions. This is a state called the essence and souls alternately separating and uniting and the planting of good seeds. And again... It sounds pretty cool. It is pretty cool. It's a temporary state. doesn't indicate sagehood. And of course, if he thinks it's he's not a sage, that's good. If he does, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, now, this is pretty interesting. And, I'll, and, and this is the part where I'll go, one day I was sitting on a bus. Here's the story. And I was reading a sutra, the Sarangama Sutra, and I passed out. I fell asleep. <laughs> I was so into the sutra, but I just kind of nodded out. But when I nodded out, I got into some state, and I seen the Buddha talking the Sarangama Sutra, speaking the teachings I was reading. But it wasn't that I was just reading it. When I get to the last part, it'll be pretty more interesting. I was hearing and seeing a whole bunch of cultivators in another land um, sitting, and here's Shakyamuni Buddha sitting down, discussing with everyone what's happening in this sutra. When I went nodded off, I ended up on I ended on one word. I forget the word because you know, that was ten years ago. <laughs> My memory is terrible, but I, I remember I passed out on a, a one word. But after I finished, like after I got out of the state, like the the bus hit a bump and I got knocked out of the state and I woke up. I realize I'm looking at where I fin where I stopped and I was reading all where I from where I stopped. I tried to continue, but I was like, oh no, I just read that. And I realized that I was going about a page and a half down, and that's exactly what I remember hearing. The last word that I the last word that I heard the Buddha speaking in this state, I uh I saw at that page that I was looking through, like, I just read all this. Oh, wait, that's the last word I heard the Buddha just saying. <laughs> so he was continuing the sutra for me in the state. Hmm. You know? And, are, you sure, are you sure you didn't read it before? No, I had just gotten the sutra, actually. <laughs> right. But um, I sat there and go, wow, that's so cool. Okay, let me go on. <laughs> let me go back to reading. And I just thought that was pretty cool. Then I said, wow, I actually heard the Dharma being spoken. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, let me continue reading. I don't want to miss out. And I just left the state there, what happened with it, and I just kept reading on and going on. 
And no, you should have you should have tried to go back to sleep and uh, contact <laughs> <Luda again. laughs> no. for the next three months. I don't even think I told anybody about this. I just remembered it now, and thankfully. You know, when I hit this 50 Skanda Demon States chapter and I came across this, that that scene automatically popped up in my head. I said, thankfully, I didn't sit there going, wow, I'm so cool. I can hear the Dharma being spoken. Oh, man. You know, (laughs) because it's a state. It just happens once in a while. It may happen. And it just happens. It's not like you're great. It's just a product of practice. Yeah, it looks really bad if you stand up on the bus and yell, I am a sage! Yeah. <laughs> Bow before me! That's right, I just saw the Buddha! <laughs> you know? So... Right, yeah, don't, don't do that. No. Okay. So the commentary just basically lets you know the same thing. Chill out, don't think it's great. You know, you're not wonderful. But it's letting you know that you, you're practicing here. And, and he goes into describing a little bit about the three spiritual and seven physical souls residing in the human body. And, and he goes on to explain these things a little bit. So we don't have to go into that explanation. I want to leave some, uh, uh, what do you call it, a feeling for people to go and check it out themselves. <laughs> you know, um, right. But what we're just doing here is to highlight a little bit of these states and let people know they're cultivating. You need to catch yourself and catch your mind. You know. All right. Yeah. So, so another one okay. <laughs> is uh, um, another one is uh, the, the the person's mind becomes clear, um, unveiled, bright, and penetrating. An eternal light will shine forth, and everything will in the ten directions turns into the color of the Jambu River gold, just very, very gold. Um, this is all species of beings will transform into the. The Tathagatas, or the Buddhas, they'll see Vayakana Buddha seated on a platform of celestial light, uh, surrounded by thousands of Buddhas who simultaneously appear upon lotus blossoms in a hundred million land, land. So it's like just you're penetrating time and space and going and seeing all of everything that is between you and the computer screen <laughs> and all the little particles and you're seeing the worlds within worlds within worlds. Okay. Is saying this is called the state. Uh, this is the state is called the mind and soul being instilled with spiritual awareness. So now it comes to the spiritual creamy oneness we're talking about before, <laughs> <laughs> where you feel totally one and complete with all things, and now you can see all things, which is pretty cool. But it's still temporary. I mean, it's so temporary. It brings up another state that I remember hitting. I was back in China many many moons ago, and. I was taking a taxi ride in my car, and uh, taking a taxi ride back home. And once we turned one corner, we were facing a mountain, the Thai mountain. So I lived at the foot of the mountain. And once we turned the corner, I had looked up, and the mountain probably was about three or four blocks distance. But when I had looked up from my seat, like I was looking at the seat in front of me, but when I looked out the windshield, all I saw was gold lining the streets. The buildings didn't look like buildings. They looked just like – they looked like gigantic people. Um, the mountain in front of me just looked like this gigantic Buddha. Literally, I, I had to rub my eyes because like I can't be hallucinating. I rub my eyes and it still stayed the same and I'm trying to just focus to tell myself, no, this is the bullshit. I'm just hallucinating, <laughs> you know, and no, for the whole ride, it felt like the ride was going so slow but the, the mountain looked – just like a gigantic Buddha, fully flesh, fully glowing with light. I mean, it was about mid midday, not a midday, around f- four or five o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, at that time in the day, all I remember was the sun was slightly ready setting, but there was no golden hue in the sky. It was still a regular, almost like a blue sky. But everything around me had this light gold sh- shine to it. And I'm just watching. I'm going, oh, man, this is amazing. And then all of a sudden, when we get to the turn, I have to turn off on, away from the mountain, um, like to turn to the direction I, where my house was. Right before the turn, it just shut off like a like someone turned a light switch off and phew, everything went back to normal. And I still rubbed my eyes. I was like, wait, what just happened? It was just like an instantaneous – it felt – it felt like five, ten minutes, but it was only a five, four or five, a three to four block drive, which can go by very quickly. And in China, there's no, you know, uh, people don't stop for for the red light. So this was like a continuous run, <laughs> you know. And it I, seems like, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, to me, it, it felt a long time, but it was only, 
probably not even a minute or two, but it felt like five, ten minutes. And that was it. Yeah, and it seems like sometimes when you hit these states, um, the minute you realize you're in a state or something, it's almost like you lose it, like you're trying to hold water in your hand or something. Yeah, that's the grasping. The the, the mind likes to grasp. It's like, ooh, what's this? This is cool. <laughs> you know, and you want to stay in it because you're still trying to understand. You're still trying to get a, literally a grasp on what it is that's being ha- that's happening here. Um, but after that happened, that was it. It, boom, it didn't happen again. Um, you know, reading these the, these things again and uh, the, these uh, sutras, reading the sutra and, and these aspects of the states, it's reminding me of a lot of what I've experienced. And thankfully, I didn't, you know, bite the hook and get reeled in um, for some of them. I remember some I got when I was much younger in my teens that I was stuck in for months, and I can mm. recall that I was stuck in for months. I have. I was gratefully blessed with a little bit of memory in that aspect. <laughs> um, but it's only temporarily. <laughs> Not a say. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's not a – even the commentary states here that it's not a real thing. It's just your mind and your physical soul are being influenced by a state of spiritual response and awakening. However, it's not real. It's, it's, it is illusory, but it's really based on your uh, – um, intense practice and cultivation so yay it's a marker says you're doing something or you wouldn't have a state like this but if you sit there and go hey i got this state this is great i'm a it's a marker that means i'm getting close to sagehood i'm a sage uh that's not good because now you're grasping for this would this be like a flavor of, of a samadhi type state these are deep states that's it that's it that's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. These are deep states. And we go just, you know, going further with this. Um, the next state he calls here, uh, excessively subduing the mind. Okay, it's it's called excessively subduing the mind, a state of this. Uh, a person uses his mind to intently investigate the wondrous light, and he will contemplate without pause or restraining and subduing his mind so that he does not go into extremes. So he's trying to like keep himself in a balance, you know, trying to hold the, the weight so his hands don't – one hand goes lower than the other hand or one hand goes higher than the other hand. He's really constantly trying to maintain and gets absorbed into this thing. Suddenly the space and the ten directions take on many colors of the seven precious things, and he just goes on to talk about this, and then – uh, simultaneously pervade everywhere without hindering one another. So his focus is so deep. The, the cultivator's focus becomes so deep that his mind um, just hits this uh, threshold and all of a sudden, pop, everything is just expansive from subduing his mind so much. Everything becomes... Uh, it's like everything just changes color. Um, nothing is uh, opposing. Nothing is obstructing. Okay, and you can feel wonderful. It's like, oh, this is a great feeling, you know. And just let it pass. Just let it pass. You know. Yeah, I'm just thinking here. Um, no, I'll carry on. I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> well, it's just letting you know not to engage in false thinking and not to think again. I'm great, or not to say I'm powerful. Even thinking and, and getting the whole vision of I am this and I am wonderful and powerful is kind of not fun. Okay, and in the commentary, Mesoha goes further into what certain things mean, the colors mean, and everything like this. So um, we can we can be sure to have a better explanation here. Like I said, I'm not here to read your com- the commentary to people. Um, that may be boring. <laughs> you can read the book. <laughs> Give them just a taste. If they want to eat the full thing, then they can. They yes, can eat it because themselves. meditation will bring you into many things, and you'll think, "Wow, I get this wonderful state." Some people hit so many different states that they'll start writing an instruction booklet on how to get to those <laughs> states, and then teach you qigong based on these kind of states. Yeah, one one of the things um, uh, I had heard, I don't remember where I heard it was. Uh, as you progress, um, sometimes you'll reach points where it seems like nothing is really happening, right? Mm. And uh, you think that you're not getting anywhere, but in fact, more may be happening beneath the surface in those quiet times than when you have these, you know, transcendent experiences. Mm-hmm. It's, you just don't realize it's, it. It's when the waters are still. 
that you're actually going to find progression. It's the most boring part of cultivation. Most people would find that there's nothing really happening. They're just sitting there and nothing's happening. You know, they could sit still, quiet, uh, maybe not get any state whatsoever and just sit still and, okay, what am I doing? Nothing. This is crazy. And they start creating different th thoughts, new notions about things. And all of a sudden, you know, they throw themselves off when they were actually going a good road. It's just the would that be would that that would almost be a demonic state right there. Yes, anything that takes you off what you're doing. Okay. Right. <laughs> Further going on, there's another state called refining the mind and purifying the vision until one is able to see in the dark. Now, some people in cultivation can start seeing different hues of light in a pitch black or pitch dark room. And people go, oh, that's just the eyes, you know, focusing. Sure, the eyes focusing and you're seeing light patterns. Is that just your retina? So if you close your eyes, right, and then you don't see those light patterns. So maybe it's not the physical eyes having to have adjusted. Maybe it's not that you're just hallucinating. You close your eyes and you don't see them, but you open your eyes and you can see maybe clouds of light moving or little shoot, shots of light in the air, sparks of light here and there, sprinkles, or, you know, someone drops fairy dust, and <laughs> you have the sprinkling, <laughs> glowing fairy dust. You may see those things. In the night, sometimes you can see full outlines of on people's body, you know? Is that the, uh, what they call the in vision or celestial vision? And call it what you want. It's refining <laughs> the mind and purifying the vision until one is able to see in the dark. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, All right. And then, uh, you know, they could see uh, different things at night, just as if it was daytime. Like the, the, the uh, sutra says the same thing. Um, while the objects that were already in the room do not disappear. Okay. Um, and again, it uses my, the commentary says it uses his mind uh, in samadhi to observe states until the pure light of his discerning mind becomes so focused that he is endowed with the samadhi power. Okay. Then he'll see various things in a dark room. He can see things inside the house. He can see things outside the house. Uh, he'll also see with great clarity uh, things that come into the house from outside. So he can just see everything that's happening around that house or around where he is. Okay? But it's still just what happens in cultivation. It may or may not happen. And if anyone never gets any of these states, who it's okay. Don't worry doesn't mean you're not cultivating and doesn't mean there are two schools of thought and the states you got weren't the states that the Buddha said so uh, to hell with what the Buddha said <laughs> okay this is just a generalization of states you give me any state you mentioned and it doesn't matter where you what kind of state you want to make one up and I can tell you how to get into it what happens from it and then whatever why because once you understand how states can come into being then you can understand how they uh, how they can manifest um, from any, in anybody. Even if you make it up, I can make I can make up a state right now, and I bet you someone will meditate and say they got into that state. Why? Because hmm. it, it's just the mind is so vast that anything can be any experience. Like I have a state where I meditate, and all of a sudden, yeah, I'll make one up. The bottle flies and hits me in the head, and now my third <laughs> eye is the bottom of my Nescafe coffee bottle. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's what my third eye looks like. Um, that's the form skanda. That's my discriminating mind making something up based on what I felt and experienced, and that's it. It's it's a lie. It's a false state. It's not real at all. Um, but if I believe it's real and think that's special, then again, I've been taken by my own mind. Some states are you screwed yourself up. Other states are not only did you screw yourself up. <laughs> But you were cultivating pretty damn good. You got someplace, and something else was like, "Hey, this guy's getting far. Let me, uh, let me knock him off his horse. Let me knock him down a bit." Yeah, and, I guess in in some regards, it's almost like uh, a loaded gun, right? Yes. So when you're really cultivating very well and you're getting some samadhi power, you're hitting the states. It's okay, but if you're not refining your concentration, you'll have more false thinking. You know, and all it is just come down to is a false thinking, people. That's all it is. And then it goes on further. So let, let's go on further. There's a state called the merging of external states. Excuse me, the merging of external states and the blending of the four elements into a uniform substance. 
Okay, it's when the mind completely merges with emptiness. His four limbs will suddenly become like grass or wood, devoid of sensation. Even when burned by fire or cut with a knife, the burning of fire will not make his limbs hot. And even when his flesh is cut, it will be like cutting. It will be like wood being wooded. Um, which reminds me of an uh, of another experience I had many moons ago when I was cutting uh, vegetables. I had just finished a strong day of uh, cultivation practice, and I went to make a salad. And I took, um, I didn't have the right tools for cutting. I didn't have like a special, you know, regular small vegetable cutting knife, whatever. I had a butcher knife. <laughs> okay, it was a damn butcher knife. That's all I was able to find, so I bought it. And I picked up my cucumber, and I'm like, I'm going to hold my cucumber up, and I'm going to start chopping little bits off of it. You know, and I was so excited that I was able to do it so cool, like I was doing it so fast in the midair, just like tick, 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 chopping up. The, well, I was holding the cucumber, I didn't throw it in midair, chopping it up. That'd be pretty. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> but I held the cucumber, and my index finger, you know, was wrapped around. Obviously, you're holding the cucumber, so it was wrapped around the cucumber, and I'm chopping, 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 chopping. And finally, I get to the halfway, and I give it a really good whack so hard that my index finger got loosened its grip and when I hit the cucumber I cracked right onto my index finger and I hit it so hard that when I realized I hit my finger I dropped the cucumber well the half that was left in my hand the other half was flying because I hit so hard and I stopped because the knife hit my finger and I lifted the knife off and my eyes widened because I'm waiting for the pain to come because I hit so damn hard but I looked and there wasn't even a mark on my finger and I'm looking at it, and I'm looking, and I'm waiting, and I put the knife down slowly, and I grab my finger because I'm thinking, okay, all of a sudden the finger's going to fall off and the blood is going to squirt out. So I grab my finger really hard and tight, and I'm projecting energy to there with my mind to hopefully I can, I don't know, what was I thinking, um, reju regenerate my skin and bone? <laughs> I was just like, okay, let me just do this. I don't feel pain. I'm like, why don't I feel pain? Oh, man, I hit it so hard I broke my nerve. <laughs> So I, was thinking, <laughs> I was scared out of my face and I, let, I decided okay I'm just going to let it go and I let go of my finger I look and it's still there and it's not bleeding and I'm like poking it with my other finger and I'm thinking I can feel my finger and I look at the knife I'm like that thing is sharp so I put it to my finger and I try to slice it slightly and it cuts the skin a little I was like how the hell is that possible I just whacked my finger so so hard and, it, and, it, and I felt the pressure of the knife. And when I hit it, it wasn't like I just banged it like a hammer. I hit it and sliced. So it had to have cut. And then after – this was before I had the Surangama, uh, before I was reading the Surangama Sutra. So I didn't know the state. I just had to go, oh my god, that's cool. I called my friend. I said, hey, I just chopped my finger and nothing happened. He's like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> I know. It's pretty cool. Okay, goodbye. And I said, thankfully, because I was just cultivating that morning and uh, I had a good state in cultivation and I was given certain type of uh, practice to do. And that practice was to harden up my bones and harden up my skin, which I didn't think it was going to actually work right away. And I had no clue that it was going to actually do something like this, even though that was a concept. But I was like, yeah, okay, cool. Whatever. And it worked. But it was temporary because now if I do that, I'm sure I'm going to chop my finger off. <laughs> so that that's probably a good test for the listeners to do to no. see if they've uh, achieved sagehood. <laughs> no, it, it's not sagehood. It's just, I know, it's, I'm just it should actually be called the state of holy crap. What the hell? That's cool. <laughs> okay, the state of now. don't try this at home. The state of don't <laughs> try this at home, kids. Right. Um, it just it's just something that happened. Um, remember we we're talking about the states that I've gone through because it co coincides with with these demon states are now it's not a demon state to have the state it becomes a demonic state or a very non-beneficial state when you think something good of it as i'm great i'm wonderful i'm pretty damn awesome okay it, it, it's not it's not like that at all it's a, not a demon state if you sit there and go okay great that's pretty awesome all right good moving on if you move on it's okay if you sit there and continue to harp on that specific state and blow your own, you know, blow your own, guess your own head up about it. It's not good. It's not good at all. So that's one of the things. It's pretty damn cool. Um, and the Master Hua does go on again with, uh, it's like if you cut a person's, this person's arms, legs with a knife or burn them a fire, he won't feel pain or discomfort. 
Um, they won't even become hot if you slice flesh from his arms and legs. It's to be like shaving wood. He'll feel no pain or irritation whatsoever. You know, um, defiled external states come together, and the natures of earth, water, fire, and air will become a single substance. So it's like a hard, a very, not a hardening, but a solidifying. Well, okay, solidifying kind of, but it's not hard. You know, it's kind of just not being broken. <laughs> Let's put it that way for a, a very, very easy way of explaining it. Um, but again, it's just a temporary state. All these states that anyone gets, whenever you hit a state, understand everyone, it is just temporary. Your happiness from watching a TV show is temporary state. You're taking a shower and feeling the nice comfort of the water passing through your skin. That's a temporary, uh, passing over your skin, not through. <laughs> That's a temporary state, okay? Every ordinary mundane thing you do all throughout the day, whether you're a cultivator or not, it's just a state. So these are not away from cultivator, but when you get deeper in practice of the mind, you'll hit much stronger, intense, very obvious states like these. So some of these sound pretty good. Uh, when we're done the interview, I'm going to try and cultivate them. <laughs> well, when you hear the state of, okay, um, let's talk about this one, the state of merging external states and the blending of the four elements into a uniform substance, you go, I never have experienced anything like that. Every time I bang my hand, it hurts. Every time I fall down the stairs, it hurts. You know, <laughs> you know, the other day I got hit by a car and I went rolling down the street and that hurt, but I did get up and walk away. You know, that's, does that count? No. If you're cultivating already, why don't you ask about these states? Ask your teacher and if you're not with a teacher in the physical body recite the buddha's name three times sit into a meditation recite the buddha's name three times and then put out this intention i would like to understand what does it mean the merging of external states and the blending of the four elements into a uniform su substance um you know uh, the buddhas of the ten directions please uh, you know give me some guidance what does this mean what kind of state is this and basically what is it that's all. And then you just recite Amitabha's name three more times and you sit and you don't even think about the question. You already put the intention out there. You already put the question and you just sit and meditate and sit and breathe and concentrate and concentrate. Maybe you'll hit the state. Maybe you'll become familiar with, oh, maybe it means this. But still, don't believe any notion you come up with. Even if a Buddha pops up in your mind and says, hey, it means this situation. Boom. He touches your third eye, rubs your crown, and all of a sudden you hit the state and you go, oh, that's it wonderful wonderful even though that happens still don't sit there and go oh that's so real that's one that's great oh i'm wonderful i can just get into any state i want let me open up a sutra and say i want that state no it doesn't work that way but if you're investigating and you're studying hmm. and you want to understand you can ask your inherent wisdom you can investigate that inherent wisdom and put this intention out there to learn to become aware and you will become aware but do not think just because you can do this that you're wonderful. It's very basic to be able to do this. And some people like to sell you, uh, sell others, oh, you can talk to the Buddhas if I, you buy my book for $50, you know, or um, you can have the power of the Buddhas and the bliss of the Buddhas if you learn from me for five grand, you know. It, it doesn't work that way. It's a very basic thing to sit in meditation and ask the universe, the inherent wisdom, the thus nature of all living beings, which is within you, ask that within. What does this mean? I want to know. And then you just drop the I, you drop the wanting, and you drop the knowing, and you just investigate. And whatever you feel comes up from that investigation, you cannot believe it right away. You can try to understand it. But you also need a reference. That's why the sutras are a very good reference. And I would say use the Shurangama Sutra as a reference for these specific notions you get. Okay? You use that. You read the sutra. You read the commentary. Whatever you get. If it fits to what this commentary is talking about. If it fits to what the Buddha has explained in his sutra. It may have some merit to it. But you have to have a, f a foundation for reference. And that is your wisdom teachings. And in cultivation of this type you need faith in what you're doing you need faith in your own inherent wisdom and that inherent wisdom is what the buddha was talking about so then you can have faith in what he faith in what he was talking about because he's saying you got it don't take my word for it go find it out in your own self and here's how you do it okay and yeah i, I would guess just anytime you feel like you're clinging or attaching to something that that's probably a bit of a red flag 
Yes. <laughs> I mean, basically, it's you teach a person how to practice, or you give them the methods on how to practice. They have to do the work. Whatever states they get, they have to come back to their teacher and say, hey, I, receive, I, I got this. What does this mean? What does that mean? And a teacher, if the teacher doesn't know, the teacher needs a foundation to know. So he goes to a sutra. He goes to a text that he can trust. And he can say, oh, the student had received this, this state. Oh, that's pretty damn cool. The sutra says that's a pretty damn awesome state. Great. Oh, but he can't do this because blah, 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 blah. So then you call your student back and you say, hey, this is the state is called this or it's something to this effect. But realize that it, the Buddha said it's such and such thing. Do not think you're you're wonderful and great and all happy and whatever. Oh, okay. And the, te- the student goes, well, no, I am great. I am awesome. Damn, I'm good. You know? Then He's like, no, the Buddha said when you do that, this is what's going to happen to you. Do you understand that? A, B, C, and D is what's going to happen to you. And the student's like, yeah, okay, whatever. A year later, you were right. I shouldn't have did that. You know? And you got to go right back from square one and start cleaning up the mess. Uh, so that's why it's always keep a guard on the mind. People think, oh, I cultivate and I'm one with the universe, one with nature, and I run around in my underwear all day long, and I do what I feel, and you know, I scream and yell when I want, and I love and hug when I want. And that's the way of the Tao. That's not the way of the way at all. That's very disregard for everything. You know? Anywho, <laughs> these are states of the form skanda. Where we're going to go is um, the next time... <coughs> <laughs> the next the next uh, part we'll we'll continue on uh we'll go further into the next uh into the next uh demonic states of uh, the next skanda and we'll go on from there so each one we'll just go about 3 or 4 to give every, give everyone a taste of w- what's in store in these things but remember there's a lot to discuss so we're just giving pieces to let everyone know this is out here this is a safeguard and you people who are cultivators need this safeguard, whether you dis- you like it or not. And you don't have to like it, but it's there. And it's just wonderful. <laughs> All right. Well, why don't we end it on that note? Yes, yes, yes. All right. And uh, thanks, everybody, for listening to Expedient Means with Lin Wei on Time Monk Radio. Oh, yeah. Please be sure to join us next week, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, anger and the states of anger. Anger and the states and, of anger. And what what causes them, such as uh, doing a show with Lynn and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so I'll, I'll leave a, with a little quote here, and it's uh, pretty straight to the point. And it says, you only lose what you cling to. Oh, you yeah. You know who said that? Um, ooh, ooh, ooh. Winnie the Pooh? <laughs> Sakyamuni Buddha. Awesome. See, just the same thing. Yeah, yeah, essentially. It's the, the anyway the, the Puda. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh is the Puda. He's like you Piglet. Can... What day is it today, Piglet? He's like, it's today. Oh yes, my favorite day. You know, that's just the beautiful quote from Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> I think I think there is quite a famous book out there called the uh, the Tao of Pooh, I believe. Y- yeah, when I first heard the title, I um, really was. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really didn't get it. I was just looking at it. You thought, you thought it was a bathroom book? Okay, good, good. That's good. Yes, I did. I did. I did. Right. Very bad person I am. But it wasn't. It was about Pooh Bear. <laughs> All right. Well, th- awesome. Thanks, Lynn. Thank we'll, you. Uh, talk to you next week. <laughs> Bye. 